his prophecy for today. Can every believer be equipped and trained and activated to prophesy? Does prophecy belong in the church? Can we all prophesy by the Spirit of God? These questions and more will be discussed in the upcoming program. Stay tuned. Dr. B.J. Alston is a divine change agent dispatched globally for the eternal kingdom of God. She is dedicated to bringing God's revolution to your life, community, and organization. She is passionate with helping everyone discover their God-given identity, purpose, and destiny. Welcome to Destiny Moments. I'm Dr. Venner Austin. Thank you for joining me for today's program, Destiny Moments. We're going to go directly to the word of the Lord. Will you grab your Bibles? We're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. The Bible says God has placed in the church the following, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then those with gifts of miracles, gifts of divine healing, gifts of revelation knowledge, gifts of leadership and different kinds of tongues. Then there's a second passage that I want you to look at right where we're right in the same place. I want you to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. The Bible says, follow after love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy, but especially that you may prophesy. We have seen a lot of restoration in the body of Christ. We have seen the restoration of the gifts of the spirit. We have seen God begin to restore prophets back to that place of functioning in the body of Christ. And when I talk about functioning in the body of Christ, understand that some prophets prophesy in the traditional church place and others are called to the marketplace. Some may be uh, uh, teachers in school. So not all of us are standing on the platform in the church to prophesy. Some of us are prophesying in other places. But what I want us to understand in uh, this particular uh, message is that we are all called to prophesy. The Bible says that we are to desire spiritual gifts, but especially desire prophecy. When we look at this word desire, this word means to be passionate. It means to burn hot with desire. So God wants us to desire prophecy. Prophecy is a building gift that belongs in the body of Christ. So when we prophesy, the Bible says that we edify, we exhort, we build up. In other words, we strengthen believers when we prophesy and we are strengthened when we prophesy. I don't know how many times I have been in a situation or circumstance in my life and I have been saying to the Lord, I need a word of, from you. I need to hear the word of the Lord. And God brings that word to me in different ways. Sometimes what the Lord would do is he will speak to me in my born again, a human spirit. He will speak the word of the Lord to me right there. I will hear a word, I'll, I'll sense an unction. Other times I may have what's called a prophetic dream. I may lay down, I might go to sleep and God will begin to show me something in that place and time when I'm dreaming. Other times God will send someone to me that he's spoken a word to them about me. He's given them a directive for me and they will have a word of the Lord. I have friends that are prophets that will call me and say, I was just thinking about you this morning in prayer and I heard the Lord begin to speak to me about you. So these are some of the ways that I receive uh, the word of the Lord. So God says, I want you to prophesy. He said, so I want you to not just be a recipient of the prophetic word, I want you to prophesy. And prophecy is not just something that those that are designated or ordained or commissioned as prophets, they're not the only ones that prophesy. 
All believers are called to be prophetic. All believers are called to prophesy. You may not have the same depth and width of, of gift as a prophet, but you can prophesy. Revelation tells us for the, uh, for the, for the uh, testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So we can all prophesy by the spirit of God. But what has happened is the church fell into a religious paradigm where we were functioning without the ministry of the prophet. We were, prof we were functioning without the ministry of the apostle. And now that we've been going through these seasons and times, these restorative seasons and time, God is bringing prophecy, has brought prophecy back to the church. So you might say, well, how should we see prophecy in the church? One of the ways that you should experience prophecy in the church is that on, on a regular basis, someone should prophesy in the church. Someone should stand and prophesy or whatever your protocol is in your church. Someone should release the prophetic word of the Lord. And so I don't believe in this model where we have the pastor's favorites are the only ones that can prophesy. We need to break that paradigm right now. We need to break that model. You need to tear that down and you need to allow the wine skin of the prophetic in your church to be renewed. And so the Bible says we can all prophesy by the spirit of God. All believers should be activated, should be equipped to do the work of the ministry, including prophecy. We can all prophesy. I want you to say that right where you are right now. Say it out loud. I can prophesy by the spirit of God. See, and I love this passage where it even talks about our children. The Bible says your sons and your daughters will prophesy. This is a season and time that we need to have prophecy in the church. I believe that our praise and worship time should be prophetic. I believe that we should start out with the songs that we know and then allow the prophetic wind of God to come in such a way that we begin to hear the new song. Revelation talks to us about the new song, sing a new song. And, and, and John begins to talk about the angels and how they sang a new song. So when we sing the prophetic song, we're singing a new song that has not been previously heard in the earth. That is the new song. Why do we need prophetic psalmist? We need prophetic psalmist because when God is getting ready to do something new in the earth, God begins to release new books. There are new songs. There are new sounds that come into the earth. So we need prophecy in the church. We need to experience prophecy on a regular basis. And we need to make room for prophecy in our services. And so when I talk about that, it makes pastors nervous, but we need to develop. All you simply need to do is to develop a prophetic protocol. How does prophecy happen in your church? How is prophecy released in your ministry, in your apostolic hub? How does that happen? And you define that and you communicate that, and then people know how to move in that uh, framework. And so we're going to continue uh, discussing uh, prophecy and why we need it. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. We will be back with more of Destiny Moments in just a moment. Are you tired of suffering defeat in your prayer life? Do you have a hunger to experience a greater degree of excellence in your life and in your ministry? Log on to Dr. Venner Alston's ministry website. Through Dr. Alston's Destiny Moments podcast, she wants to provide you with radical strategies and cutting edge approaches that will empower you to produce lasting results. Find out how to join her exceptional woman mentoring group where you can receive coaching and online training. Find out more on how to enroll in Dr. Alston's Global Leadership University, where you can receive virtual and on-site training in a one-year or two-year school and receive your leadership certificate. Go to her store where you can find resource tools to help you become a more powerful prayer warrior. Understand how you can partner with Dr. Alston to help her reach out with kingdom strategies to transform the nations. To Destiny Moments. Yeah. 
So yes, we are going to continue this discussion of prophets and prophecy in the church. We need prophetic worship. Our intercessors and watchmen need to understand how to hear the voice of the Lord and begin to pray from that prophetic place, from that place of prophetic revelation. It is vitally important. Yes, I understand that some watchmen and some intercessors are administrative. These are the individuals that they come in to the prayer room and they have a list of things that they want to pray. I'm not negating that. We need that kind of a focus in the prayer room, but we also need to make room for those spontaneous times that God wants to just sovereignly release from heaven uh, prayers and things that are on his heart. And we begin to pray those things back to him. You know, I have an intercessor connected to me and one of the prayers she prays is she says to the Lord, I want to hear the intercession of Jesus. Lord, let me hear the, your intercession and let me begin to pray your intercession. See, when our intercession, when our prayer time is prophetic, we begin to pray what is on the heart and the mind of God. I believe this. I believe God downloads it into us and we begin to pray it back to him. When we do that, we create a platform for God to step out on and begin to manifest his will, begin to manifest his purposes. So we need to have prophecy in every area of our, our worship life, in every area that we are, whether we are in the traditional church or whether you are in the marketplace, there are so many components of prophecy. Right now, I'm just focusing on the utterance aspect giving the word of the Lord. That's the part that I'm focusing on right now. I understand the, com the, the components of discernment and all of these other areas that are part, uh, part of this prophetic utterance. Because when we prophesy, there is a way that we receive from God, right? Some of us see it, some of us hear it, some of us sense it, you know, that God puts it right down in this place that we call our knower. But we need to understand that every place that we are, we should never be disconnected connected from the voice of God. See, prophecy is the release of the voice of God wherever we are. And I need his voice every place that I am. Don't you? I need to hear the voice of the Lord. So in this season, God is bringing us back to the desire of his heart that our gatherings would be so filled with, with prophecy and, and, and utterances and uh, prophetic songs and prophetic worship. And then we would have prophetic intercessors and watchmen that we would know how to pray the heart of God, that we would sing right out of that place of the heavenly place. I, one of the things I pray over worship leaders is this. I pray and I ask the Lord to take you to the throne room where and enter that place where God keeps the scrolls of songs that have been written, but not yet released in the earth. And I just pray right now for every uh, worship leader, every psalmist, every musician that is watching. I pray for you right now that you will begin to hear songs that are coming right out of heaven, that God will give you a throne room encounter and you will go into that storehouse, that storeroom, that storage place where God keeps all of the songs and the sounds and you will begin to retrieve a new song, a new sound, and you will bring that new song and that new sound right into the earth because there are new songs and new sounds that precede every move of God. Another place and another way we see prophecy is those that are creative, they're artists. God will bring you, he will show you the beauty realm of heaven and you will begin to, to, to draw, you will begin to put something on canvas that shows us a, a glimpse of the beauty realm of heaven. See, we need all of these expressions of prophecy. These are all expressions of prophecy. Some of us write books, we write prophetic books. And it's prophecy, isn't it? But what I want you to really understand is that we can all prophesy by the Spirit of God. And I want you to be activated. I want you to be built up. I want you to be strengthened. I want you to have confidence to know that you can prophesy by the power of the Spirit of God. He wants you to prophesy. Put your hand on your belly right where you are right now. Put your hand on your stomach. And I speak over you now. And 
and I command the prophetic rivers of God to begin to rise in you in a new way. I decree and I declare that prophecy is coming up out of you like a river. You will hear the voice of the Lord. You will begin to declare the voice of the Lord in a new way. I decree that you will hear songs and sounds. You will even begin to capture God ideas and witty inventions, and you will begin to bring them into the earth realm. So right now, I activate the prophetic anointing that is resident on the inside of you, and I command it to come up in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every assignment of doubt, fear, and unbelief, every assignment of fear of rejection. I rebuke that off of you in the name of Jesus. That is not your portion. I decree that you will rise in faith and begin to declare the word of the Lord. God is good, isn't he? He is pointing us toward that which he has purposed for us. This is a season and time that we need to be those that say, I'm going to begin to declare the word of the Lord every place that I am. I'm going to begin to prophesy every place that I am. See, sometimes when you begin to prophesy that word of the Lord that you have, it's not always popular, is it? It's not always what people want to hear. It's not always that. Sometimes what you begin to prophesy can make people uncomfortable. Now, I'm not talking about being harsh and being critical and being a doomsday prophet. One of the things that I say is that all prophets and prophetic people, we all go through what I call the spooky stage. We all, go, we all do. We all go through that. And, but the Bible says we have our senses exercised by reason of use. What does that mean? It means that the more you prophesy, the more opportunities you have to prophesy, the, the more proficient you, be, you become in your gift. Don't worry about missing it. Don't worry about getting it wrong. You might make a mistake. I often say, Jesus is the only prophet that I know that never missed it, that never made a mistake. So by the Spirit of God, you can prophesy. It is a season for your prophetic voice to come alive in a new way. We are in the season of the mouth. You need to look at your circumstance, look at your situation, and begin to prophesy. Prophesy every place that you go. When we train children to, act, to prophesy, one of the things we do is we might stand at an elevator, and we might say, which elevator is coming? And they'll say, Jesus, show me which elevator is going to come first. See, there are simple ways that we can prophesy and activate our children to prophesy. We need to capture what God is showing them in their dreams. Many of our children are having prophetic dreams. And so he said, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Now I want you to stay tuned. I'll be right back. And when I come back, I'm going to pray and activate you to prophesy. We will be back with more of Destiny Moments in just a moment. Call or go to the web address on the screen right now and get Venner Alston's brand new revelatory book, Next Level Spiritual Warfare, plus her four-part audio CD series entitled Prayers That God Hears. It's yours for a donation of $40. Does it seem as though no matter how much you pray, your prayers are not being heard? Do you feel discouraged and give up praying when God's help is slow and coming? Through my book, I will reveal strategies for partnering with heaven and engaging in militant prayer, teach you how to stand squarely on the foundation of scripture, help you recognize the demonic structures operating against you, reveal how to use powerful weapons of warfare to dismantle the enemy's strongholds, teach you how to move forward in the authority of God using prophecy and prophetic declarations, arm you with the tools to help you overthrow every assignment of hell that comes against you, give you advanced strategies for defeating the enemy. It's time for you to take back what the kingdom of darkness has been stealing from you. Plus, Venner will include her four-part audio CD series, Prayers That God Hears. This decade is about the mouth and the words we speak. Understanding how to hear and pray effectively is a key weapon of spiritual warfare for this decade. In this series, you will learn how to go deeper in faith and prayer. You will learn how to activate your prophetic gifting, enabling you to hear and perceive what is in the heart of God in specific situations and release God's heart in prayer. On CD number one, you will 
understand what the Word of God says about prayer and the different types of prayer, discover how Jesus prayed. You will become more effective in your own prayer life. On CD number two, Vinner shares how to pronounce prayers of faith, healing, and deliverance. Learn how to activate your prophetic hearing to hear the Word of God. Activate your voice to experience the manifestation of God's promises. On CD number three, you will discover the power of prophetic prayers, discover how to bring heaven to earth, understand that prophecy is a key weapon in spiritual warfare, learn how to activate your prophetic voice and pray from a prophetic position. On CD number four, you will learn how to partner with heaven's special forces in prayer, understand how to release God's angelic forces and see more responses to your prayers. Don't miss out on getting Venner Alston's brand new revelatory book, Next Level Spiritual Warfare, plus her four-part audio CD series entitled, Prayers That God Hears. It's yours for a donation of $40. Call the number on your screen or go to her website to order right now. And now back to Destiny Moments. So as we wrap up, let's look at Jeremiah chapter one. We're going to look at verse five and then we're going to look at verse 10. This is what the word of God says. Before I made you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I chose you for a special work. I chose you to be a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah, I am putting my words in your mouth. Today, I have put you in charge of nations and kingdoms. You will pull up and tear down. You will destroy and overthrow. You will build up and plant. One of the things that I want us to understand about prophets is that, and prophecy, especially now for prophets, there's a capacity that prophets have that God has given them that we root up, we tear down, we build, and we plant. So we don't just root up and we don't just tear down. We also build and we also plant. Now we can see the prophetic mandate on Jeremiah's life right here in this passage of scripture. He said, before you were even born, he said, I ordained you to be a prophet. You're not just a prophet. I am sending you to the nations. Some of you are prophets that have a call to the nations on your life. I want to encourage you to begin to ask the Lord, am I a prophet? How do you want me to prophesy? Where do you want me to prophesy? To whom do you want me to prophesy? Especially for those of you that you already know that you're a prophet. You've been in the cave. You've been in that place of hiddenness. It's time for you to emerge. I speak over every prophet that has retreated like Elijah into the cave of fear and rejection and hiddenness in an untimely way. And I call you forth out of that cave. And I say it is time for the prophets to begin to arise and emerge from that cave, emerge from that place of hiddenness. I declare that over you in the name of Jesus. And so some of you are called to nations. You know that you're called as a prophet to nations. I want you to let your eyes be open to the nations that are all around you, whether you work or whatever you do on a given day, let your eyes be open. You have dreams about nations, things that God is going to do in nations. You've been having these dreams and you don't know what to do. You know your call to foreign soil. I want you to begin by praying and asking the Lord, what nations has he assigned you to? Ask the Lord, what nations has he assigned you to? And then as you discover what nations God has assigned you to, ask the Lord, is he going to send you to those nations? If God says, yes, I want to send you to those nations, I want you to take a step of faith and get your passport. Take a step of faith and get your passport. See, this is about preparation, isn't it? You know that you're called to the nations. God is telling you what nations you're called to. Get your passport so that when the door opens, you are ready to go through that door because you heard the Lord tell you that you were a prophet to the nations. 
Sometimes as a prophet to, to the nations or a nation, God will call you to confront the culture. There are things that are in the culture that, that don't align with the heart of God. And what God does, he raises up prophets that have a word of the Lord in their mouth. They are not fearful. They are not ashamed. They are bold and they are courageous. They are strong and they declare the word of the Lord. They prophesy even if it means I will prophesy unto death. They are not going to back down. You cannot silence prophets that are called by God and understand their identity. So I want us to know this. I want you to know that God may call you to confront some things in culture. And because you've had good mentors, good trainers all around you, you will know how to go into places that uh, where maybe you need to be more politically correct. You will know how to go into those places and declare the word of the Lord. You will know how to do that. And, and you don't have to be afraid. God will send the legion, the army of angels with you into that place. God himself will open the door for you. He will make an entrance for you. And when you go into that place, there is a word of the Lord that will be released from your mouth that will, that will shift entire regions and nations. See, this is why we need prophecy. Prophecy brings us into current revelation. It tells us what's on the heart and the mind of God, not just for that moment, but it also shows us what God wants to do, what God is intending to do in the future. See, with prophets, we need to understand that when we speak, our words are like a hammer. Our words smash those things in the spirit realm that are trying to be resistant to the plan of God. That's, that's the power of the prophet's words. When we begin to speak. We declare these words of the Lord. We literally begin to see walls fall. We begin to see regions and nations shift. We begin to see signs, wonders, and miracles released in our midst because we prophesied. We moved out of what we knew into what we did not know. We begin to access revelation right from heaven. And I speak now over every prophet that you become discouraged and you felt like, no, your word was not being heard. I want you to know that when that word goes out of your mouth, it goes out of your mouth like a two-edged sword. Don't worry about whether people are hearing the word. Your responsibility is to share that word. Your responsibility is to prophesy. Your responsibility is to declare the word of the Lord. Be faithful in the assignment that God has given you. We need prophecy in the church. We need prophetic believers that understand that they can hear and release the word of the Lord. I activate the prophetic streams of God in you right now, and I decree that there's a bubbling up now of the prophetic word in your belly. I decree that God is going to send you to someone that has been waiting on the word of the Lord and you will begin to declare the word of the Lord. There's a sure word that is in your mouth. I decree that this is a season that you will begin to hear and you will begin to declare. And I decree that every assignment of Jezebel, Jezebel hates the prophets, but I decree that no assignment of Jezebel will prosper against you, that you will declare the word of the Lord. Now I speak to the prophetic river in you and I say, come up, spring up, oh well, spring up and prophesy. I will see you next week. In the absence of vision, the visionless will resort to imitation. Live with vision.